changed prayer uh, that changes things. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. A changed prayer that changes things. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We know that prayer changes things. Amen. But what kind of prayer? Hallelujah. What kind of prayer changes things? Uh, you hear the athletes in, in sports sometimes saying, amen. We pray that God will help us win the game. And, amen. But you got some saved folk on the other team. Amen. And I'm sure they got on their knees and prayed and asked God. You know, you know sometimes after the football game, you see both teams get out there on the field. And, amen. They're praying at other sports events. Amen. They're praying together. You have all kinds of people praying all over the world. Amen. Seems as though God don't hear, amen, what they're saying, amen. And so uh, uh, what kind of prayer, amen, gets God's attention? What kind of prayer, amen, reaches to God and changes uh, the situation and what you're going through and the problem that's in your life, amen? How do a change prayer, amen, that changes things, changes the situation, amen, and the obstacles and the hindrances in our life so we're going to ask you to turn to Matthew uh, the the amen hallelujah seventh chapter amen hallelujah thank you Lord and uh, hallelujah and we're going to ask you to turn to um, excuse me the sixth chapter I'm sorry sixth chapter of Matthew and seventh chapter of uh, Second Chronicles six and seven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have it? Say it, man. You have it. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this Sunday morning. We thank you for another opportunity to give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for this day that you have made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the words of knowledge, the word of life that you've given. Amen to me, Lord God, to share with those hearers, Lord God. But let us not be hearers only, but doers of your word. Let us take this word that will, amen, be preached today and let us share Oh, God, let it uh, saturate the hearts and minds of people, amen, that they may live right and do what's pleasing in your sight, do what's holy, do what's righteous, do what you are called for them to do in these last and evil days. Bless us, keep us, and care for us. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name I pray. Everybody say amen. Once again, I told you a couple of weeks ago when we talked about standing on faith that that was a message, that was a life-changing message. Thank you that could change your life forever, that could improve your life if you could stop walking on your circumstance and walking on the people that caused the problem. And amen, we call their name out more than we'll call out our deliverer. Amen. So we just walk out and stand on faith. Amen. Peter didn't see Jesus and thought about politics. He didn't think about the laws of gravity. He didn't think about all those things. He saw his Lord and he stepped out on faith. Once again, amen, we have a message, amen, and, and, and uh, most messages, amen, will change your life forever if you take heed to them. Amen. That's why they're there. That's why God has given his, amen, people of God, amen, the word of God to change their life. Once again, we have, amen, a message that will, if you take heed to it, amen, literally change your life. Amen. If you pay attention and, and put these principles in practice in your life, it will indeed change your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So what we have over here is, amen, over in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, amen, Jesus dealing with his disciples, amen, disciples being students, amen, followers of Jesus Christ, amen, and he said, take heed, amen, six and one, that you do not uh, uh, take your arms before men to be seen of them, amen, otherwise ye have no reward of your father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou uh, doest thine arms, uh, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, as they have uh, glory of men. Verily I say 
unto you, they have their own reward. But their reward is public. Amen. They want to be seen of men. They're seen of men. So therefore, amen, they got their rewards. Amen. The streets in the streets that they hung out in. Amen. Amen. But uh, when thou alms, when thou give, amen, when you're giving your offering, let uh, not thy left hand know what thy right hand is doing. It's not about the people that see you giving. It's about your giving. Amen. Amen. And so uh, that thy arms may be in secret and thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee. What? Openly. Amen. Hallelujah. And when thou prayest, talking about prayer today. Amen. Hallelujah. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they uh, love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, hallelujah, uh, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest in a, into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in what? In secret. Amen. Hallelujah. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee. What? Openly. Amen. Hallelujah. So he see you praying in secret. And he will give you, amen, an open reward. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking today about a changed prayer. Hallelujah. That will change things. Amen. Hallelujah. A changed prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. That will change things. Amen. Over in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Amen. We are at the sixth, uh, the seventh verse. Hallelujah. It said, and when ye pray... Use not vain repetitions as uh, the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye need of before you ask. And this was a question I was asked a long time ago. Somebody said to me, uh, I was a minister, and they said, Minister Fields, they said, amen. Why do you need to pray to God for things that he already know you need? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so uh, why, why do you need to ask your parents for stuff that's already in the refrigerator? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cookies are already there in the jar. Amen. Hallelujah. You know they did. They know they did. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you dare not go touch one cookie. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Without talking to that, you understand what I'm saying? The, the, the great outdoors is out there. The playground is there. The pool is there. Chuck E. Cheese, McDonald's, all that is right out there. Amen. But don't you leave that house, amen, without getting the approval, amen, hallelujah, of the parent. Amen. Hallelujah. So God has everything. And everything belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Yes, indeed. But you need to ask. Ask and it shall be given. Seeking you shall find. And the knock and the door shall be open. I said it all comes down to one word. The word is reverence. Amen. And when you reverence him, when you honor him, when you look to him, he'll deliver you. He'll set you free. Because you look to him. Amen. Jesus healed ten lepers. One came back with reverence. Hallelujah. To thank him. Hallelujah. For the healing. Amen. The rest was healed, but he was made whole. Hallelujah. Because he gave reverence. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we pray. Amen. He said, not using vain repetition as the heathen do in the seventh verse, for they think that they shall be heard uh, for their much speaking. Amen. But be ye not therefore unlike uh, to them, uh, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you even ask. Hallelujah. But he wants to hear from you. Amen. Hallelujah. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Hallelujah. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. A lot of us stop right there. That's pretty, isn't it? Sounds so sweet. Sounds so nice. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but the, 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 uh, the next two verses are important. Amen. And we kind of stop there. Amen. At the amen. Amen. We need a benediction and we go out the door. Amen. But we need to hit the 14th and the 15th. It says, if you forgive men their trespasses, 
your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly, your father forgive you your trespasses. Amen. Hallelujah. First, right off the bat, God, amen, Jesus Christ is letting his disciples know, amen, that they have to do things a little bit differently. Amen. They are all Jews. They are Jewish people. Amen. He grew up. Amen. And I know people, do, uh, uh, they, they deny, amen, his heritage. Amen. Uh, whether he was born under the province of Africa. Amen or Rome or whatever the case may be amen he was raised Jewish amen <laughs> hallelujah with Jewish laws and Jewish customs he quoted amen the Torah and the, and the, and the, and the Talmud and the, the, the books of the Old Testament amen hallelujah and because he grew up Jewish amen hallelujah and so the followers the disciples at this time were Jewish amen and so amen they, they wanted to learn how to pray because they learned they knew the Jewish tradition on praying amen and how they are supposed to pray they, were, they knew from them youth up Amen. As the, as the rich young ruler told Jesus, these things I've done from my youth up. I have an understanding of Jewish laws and customs. I know what to do, Jesus. Amen. How do, I want you to tell me what must I do to inherit eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, one thing that I lack is, amen, sell what you have. Amen. Take up the cross and follow me. Amen. Jesus hit him kind of deep in a deep understanding because, amen, the first rule, he said, love the Lord our God with all that heart, with all that might, with all that strength. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, okay, I've done that. He said, okay, well, then sell what you have, take up the cross, and follow me. Because if you love the Lord our God with all that might, with all that strength, you will sell everything you have and take up the cross. I'm putting it to the test. Do you really believe the word? Amen. That you just quoted. Amen. Hallelujah. He turned away and walked away. And Jesus said he didn't love the Lord that God with all that. You understand what I'm saying? Because if he did, he would have sold everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Because when you love somebody, you don't care about things. As I said before, Peter saw Jesus. He loved Jesus. He stepped out on the water because of his love. Amen. Because he saw his Lord coming. Hallelujah. If that's you, God bid me to come. Come on, Peter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that was John on the coast, he wouldn't have said that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His fellow fishermen out there, he wouldn't have said that. Because it was Jesus, he stepped out on faith. Hallelujah. And it changed things. So Jesus was setting a new, amen, paradigm of reaching God, a communication with God, amen, when he was setting this new prayer, how, amen, to reach God, how to talk to God. Uh, first of all, he gave a warning as to what not to do. Amen. Sometimes, amen, we need to learn what not to do. Before we learn what to do. Amen. Don't do this and don't do that. And, and you, with the kids and amen. With new converts. Amen. It's important to say what not to do. Hallelujah. But it's also equally important. Amen. To give them some things to do. Amen. I was on the phone with someone talking last night. It was talking about leadership and amen. Dealing with people and amen. And this one is kind of, you know, aggressive. And I said, but even in their aggressiveness, you don't want to cut them off. Amen. Hallelujah. Because people get frustrated that they don't have anything to do. Amen. And they'll turn and walk away. Amen. But you need to give them some other avenues. Amen. Of expression. Amen. Hallelujah. They might not can't do this, but they can do this, this, and this, and this. Amen. Hallelujah. Give them some things to do. Amen. So they can learn that they are part of what you're going on, what's going on. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus being God understood the fact, amen, that it wasn't going to be just for Jews learning, amen, and understanding the kingdom things. Amen. I'm going to open this thing up to, amen, everybody. Amen. As Amen. He did at the close of his ministry up in the upper room. Amen. When he, amen, how did he had the last supper? Amen. He started a new tradition. Amen. Of communion. Amen. Hallelujah. Other outside of Passover. They sat there for the Passover, but he gave them a new, amen. Hallelujah. Spiritual right. Amen. He said, as often as you do this, you show forth my death till I come. And just like that, just like the Holy Communion, as he broke bread with his disciples, amen. He's teaching his disciples how to pray amen hallelujah and learn how to communicate with God communication is important if I spoke amen this message in Greek and you didn't understand Greek amen hallelujah then you would not understand the words that are coming out of my mouth amen because you don't speak the language it's all Greek to you amen hallelujah so you don't know what I'm saying because I'm not communicating in a language in which you understand what I'm saying amen and so Jesus knew amen that the, the, the times are changing I'm shifting amen hallelujah from law to grace I'm shifting from, from Israel to the church amen and so I got to 
and teach my disciples how to pray, how to acknowledge God. Now, don't stand out in the corners and before the people and use pretty words and long prayers, amen, to impress people. It's not about anybody else. How, you're talking to me. You're talking to God. Hallelujah. And so you're not here to impress nobody. Hallelujah. You're not here, amen, how to show off what you learned. Amen. You read your dictionary today. Amen. And so you're going to pull out all your big ones. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And to impress me with all your big words. Amen. But have you reached Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have, have, have your prayer been answered? Hallelujah. A changed prayer that changes things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so have your prayer been answered? Have you reached God or not? Or have you said, baby, that was a good prayer. And you just stick your chest out. Yeah, yeah, that's good too. I tell you, I tell you, the Lord, the Lord is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. He's good to me because I know how to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you need to pray, amen, because you need to acknowledge God, one, amen. But God will have you praying even when you're going through trials and tribulations. And he'll bring some stuff into your life to cause you, amen, to, to keep can pay attention to him. Amen. I heard pre preachers say he'll put you on your back so you can look straight up. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes he'll put you back there so you can say, Lord, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry what I did, whatever it was. Amen. Whatever the mistake was, Lord, please forgive me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus wanted his, his disciples. Amen. Hallelujah. I want my disciples to do this thing right. As Joshua, amen, as he was getting ready to die, he was leaving the world. He pulled all the elders and, the, and everybody together and the great men and people of Israel. Hallelujah. He said, look, you, you're living in houses you didn't build. You, you, you're drinking water from wells you didn't dig. Hallelujah. God has blessed the people of God. Hallelujah. And if it, it seemed pleasing unto you, amen, to, to worship the fathers, amen, the God of your fathers in Egypt, amen, hallelujah. You can go back and worship, amen, idol gods, amen, but as for me, in my house. In other words, I've trained my people. Amen. My family know what to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I've been a good. I've been a good leader, and I've been a good father. Hallelujah. So because I trained my tra uh, trained my family. Hallelujah. I, I trained up my children the way that they should go. He said, "As for me and my house." We will serve the Lord. Another thing that Cecil got wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. In the Ten Commandments. Amen. Hallelujah. That was, uh, Josh was getting ready to die. Amen. Hallelujah. And he had it when he was passing him the, uh, the Ten Commandments when Moses was getting ready to die. No, that wasn't right. Amen. Hallelujah. But he wanted to make a movie. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the movie. Amen. That movie has blessed a lot of people. We thank God for it. Amen. And it caused me to read the Bible. Amen. <laughs> and find out what, what really happened. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, amen. Joshua made that, that proclamation, amen, at the end of his life, at the end of his ministry, to let, amen, hallelujah, the people know that they need to serve the same God that's been blessing and delivering them. And so Jesus, amen, hallelujah, is the same name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Joshua, Yahshua, amen, hallelujah, in the New Testament, the Greek form of the word Yahshua, hallelujah, letting the, the, the disciples know, amen, how to talk to God. How to, how to reach God. How to have things change in their life. I don't want to pray just to be talking. I don't want to pray just to sound with, with pretty words and, amen, swelling words. Hallelujah. I want to pray to reach God. God, I need some help. Hallelujah. The life God is there just in case something happens. I need a life God there. When something happens, I need, a, I need somebody to know how to swim. I need somebody that's been trained, amen, in, in, in CPR, amen, that know how to resuscitate me, amen, to wake me up from, amen, from whatever it is water get in my lungs. I need somebody to know how to push on my diaphragm and, and push that water back out. Amen. Hallelujah. And help me out a little bit. I, I need somebody trained. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I go in the doctor's office. I want to see some sheepskin on the wall. Amen. I, I want to know you've been to class somewhere. Hallelujah. If I see some computer online, you no, know, sir. Hallelujah. I need you to be in somewhere cutting something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need you to sit on somebody smarter than you. Amen. Hallelujah. That told you know that's wrong you need to do it this way amen hallelujah i need somebody that knows what they're doing amen hallelujah so when i come to god i'm looking for god to do some things when i pray when i'm talking to god i'm not doing it to impress you hallelujah i'm talking amen to the lord of lords i'm talking to the king of kings so jesus tells him right off the bat hallelujah hallelujah when you pray Hallelujah. Say our Father. In other words, amen, God gets the glory out of our life. God gets the attention of our life. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's. Amen. It belongs to God. God has everything, and everything belongs to him. I will lift mine eyes into the hills will come my help. My help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So God is our primary source 
of deliverance. He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He is our provider. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. He will provide himself. Amen. Hallelujah. What we need for our life. Hallelujah. He's El Shaddai. He's the almighty God. Hallelujah. He can do whatever we need in our life. He can provide it. Hallelujah. Our Father. Hallelujah. We got to recognize who he is. Hallelujah. Who some pray to Jesus. I, I heard some folk pray to the Holy Ghost. I, some pray to their spiritual leader. Hallelujah. But they I, I don't know about the leader. Hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost and Jesus, they both God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, My I and my father are one. Hallelujah. We we get Trinitarian a little bit. Amen. We try to break it down. Amen. And try to explain it. I don't I don't follow for their analysis. Amen. We just got some issues with the conclusion. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when you focus on God, you lose the Savior, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you look on Jesus, you lose God and you lose the Spirit. Hallelujah. And he told Mary, you can't touch me because I haven't ascended to my Father. But when he, the Comforter, has come, there's something greater that's coming. I'm not going to be with you, but I'm going to be in you. Something more powerful that's going to lead and guide you to all truth and bring all. So when you look to the Holy Ghost, you miss God and Jesus. Hallelujah. So God, he is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They're all, they're all one. He's from the beginning. He said, hallelujah, I come out of the order of a Melchizedek. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And when you hear uh, the angel of the Lord, they're talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. And so you hear, amen, that Jesus was from the beginning. And, and matter of fact, the, the spirit preceded him. Hallelujah. They say, when God, amen, made the heavens and earth, the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Hallelujah. So the, spirit, the Holy Ghost was already there, separating and dividing. That's why when the spirit comes, it's going to separate you. Amen. It's going to divide you. I was saved at 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I was I was acting silly and doing some stuff that 15 year olds do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, amen. When I got saved and when I received the power of God in my life, I, I had to end some stuff. I had to get away some from it separated me from Amen. My friends. I was I was a miserable person. Amen. Because I, I rejected, Amen, God. I, I rejected the Holy Ghost that was on the inside. I tell it. I ain't scared to tell it. Hallelujah. That was on the inside of me. I tried to act like the the, 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 the hard heads, amen. When I was in school school, amen, and try to act all churchy, amen, and get my shout on and say, I was playing the drums in, in the choir at the time, amen, hallelujah, so I'm showing off, amen, hallelujah, being seen of men, as the scripture said, hallelujah, and trying to go to go to uh, the school and hang out after school and do some stuff outside of the will of God, and I was miserable because I know the spirit was convicting me when I was out there with them, and, and when I come into God's house and try to praise him, you know, like, you know what you did last time, I know what you did, boy, I know what you did last night, now, how in the world are you going to come in here and lift your hands in the same chair? Well, no, you, none of that. You ain't going to have none of that in here because you know what you did last night. Hallelujah. So I was miserable until I made the decision, Lord, I got to serve you. Well, he made it for me, really. I'll be honest with you. Hallelujah. I depended on my friends. Hallelujah. And they backed up and left me. Hallelujah. They left me hanging. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, they thought it was funny. Hallelujah. They thought it was cute, the fact that I got in trouble. Amen. So I had to make a decision right there, jail or Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I said, Jesus, I'll take you for my children. There's not a friend like the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? I chose Jesus as my friend. Hallelujah. 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 And, and they're grateful too, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I chose him as my friend. I, I, as we was having a conversation about slavery, amen, and some fellows, you know, of a, another persuasion, amen, started conversating about old Negro spirituals and amen, how we were seen through our trouble. I said, yeah, those songs got, got us through a whole lot of trouble. I said, but it, it also saved the lives of a whole lot of slave masters. Amen. So you ought to thank the Lord. You ought to thank the Lord for that song. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't look down on the song. Now. Hallelujah. You better thank God for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Because everybody ain't going to take that. Amen. Hallelujah. But the power of God will allow you. Amen. Hallelujah. To make it through the storm, whatever you're going through. So Jesus tells them immediately, our Father, hallelujah, who art in heaven, he's away from us. He's above us. We know theologically that God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. So we know that he's here, there, and everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. But we need a point of reference. Amen. Hallelujah. We need something to look to. Hallelujah. And so, amen, the Jews look to Mount Zion. Hallelujah. And we, we thank God. Hallelujah. That we can lift our eyes to the hills. Amen. When we come, our help, our help comes from, they were talking about Zion. Hallelujah. And so we thank God. Hallelujah. That we, 
we, we look up to heaven, amen, we look up to the heavens and we lift our eyes, amen, hallelujah, in, in, in anticipation, in, in, a, in a look of need, amen, and lament to God, whatever the storm, whatever the problem that we're going through, we're looking to God, hallelujah, to, to deliver us, to come on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down, whatever the problem, my deliverance, my healing, whatever it is, God, some of these songs you hear people say, reach up and get it, hallelujah, you got to reach out, amen, hallelujah, no, your arms are too short to reach all the way where your problem is, amen, or where your deliverance is, amen, hallelujah, but God um, is able to see that point of, amen, faith that you're showing, amen, and bring that thing to pass because you got enough, uh, 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 you got enough, you got enough strength, amen, you got enough faith to believe that if I go like this, I'm pulling down my blessings, I'm pulling down my deliverance, I'm pulling down my healing, amen, that stick that Moses had couldn't open that seed, hallelujah, but the faith that he had to stretch it out, hallelujah, open up the waters, you understand what I'm saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that mantle that Elijah hit that water with, hallelujah, didn't have the power to separate it, hallelujah, but there was something on the inside, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that he hit the water, and the water divided, amen, hallelujah, so it's not in the stick or the mantle, hallelujah, it's in the person of God, amen, hallelujah, the power is in you, hallelujah, and you got to believe God, and trust him, and he said, I'll follow which art in heaven, hallowed, be thy name, you are holy. We got to reverence God. We got to look to God. Hallelujah. And honor him and who he is. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. We got to look to build the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We got to, you got to look for his benefit. Amen. In salesmanship, they tell you, amen, when you're having conversations with people, you got to speak their benefit. What's the benefit of them having this product or whatever it is you're selling? Amen. You can't say like, this is the best thing in the world. Oh, you need some of this and you need to have this in your house. Every, every kitchen need to have this. Every, every wash room, you need, this, you need this detergent, amen, the soap powder, amen, it cleans everything, well, what's the benefit, amen, to me, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, and the benefit to that is, amen, hallelujah, God gets the glory, amen, we reverence in him, amen, we want his kingdom to be here, like I said, we are ministries, it's plural, amen, because every one of the mem every member of agape is the part of the ministry, your ministry is the ministry of agape, Hallelujah. So, so many times, amen, the only ministry was the ministry of the church. Hallelujah. And everything had to be done in the church. And amen. And everything is like here, 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 nothing out there, there, there. No, the ministry is out there. Amen. You don't see no houses at the gas station. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a good reason for that. You go get your gas and you go. Amen. The church is the spiritual gas station. You're supposed to come here and get filled up. Amen. Hallelujah. And use the gas out there. Hallelujah. What you have, what you got filled with, amen, hallelujah, the spirit of God, amen, the power of God, a word of knowledge, you're supposed to take it, it means nothing. I have a pastor here, we thank God for pastor, apostle, Hall being with us, amen, and any other pastors that's listening, amen, you kill the message when we don't share with the, with the, word, with the word of God that's come across the pulpit, it kills it. It was a great word, wow, that was powerful, what you going to do with it? Put it in your purse, put it on the shelf. Or you just tell one person. You know, pastor preached a message. And you, and you know, a lot of our churches would be full if we could just share, amen, the ministry with other people. I worked at this rundown, uh, oh, they, I want them to sue me. I worked at this hotel, amen, and, and, and it wasn't quite up to par, amen. And they wanted me to come work in the kitchen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, uh, 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 the first thing I said was, I said, do your front desk people eat? They said, no, they go and we send them. They don't, they're not allowed to eat in the kitchen. I said, well, first of all, they need to eat in the kitchen. Hallelujah. They said, why? I said, because when your guests come and ask where's a good place to eat, they need to point your, to your restaurant. Hallelujah. So first of all, they need to eat. You need to start feeding them. Hallelujah. You understand? And so because, you know, if they don't have no faith in the kitchen, amen, everybody that comes in, they ain't going to have no faith in the kitchen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, how, and what they say about their kitchen determines the success of the kitchen. Amen. He wanted to go out and do all the, do advertisement and go to the different car dealers and adult, uh, businesses in the area. I said, man, you can't get people from the hotel to come over in your kitchen. Amen. You can't get people from upstairs to come downstairs. Amen. How are you going to get <laughs> people from across the street? Amen. To come. <laughs> you understand? You got to build up what you have. You understand? 
I, and and I and I made the somebody made the mistake of coming in the in the front lobby with a bag of chilies from Chili's, Amen. And that was a, that was very nice, Amen. We had a conversation, Amen. And everybody understood, Amen, that we build up your own house, Amen. And when you speak of what's what is there a good thing to eat or where is there a good place to eat, Amen. You smile and you tell them about your kitchen, Amen. You tell them about your restaurant, what you have here, Amen. What's your reaction when people ask you about your church? What's your reaction when people ask you about your ministry and what you belong to? What y'all believe in? A lot of people go to church every Sunday and don't know what the church believes in, what their vision is, what the mission statement is. We don't know any of those things. We just go to church. We're just in church. We're not a part of the ministry. And so we have to be a part of the ministry. And let me tell you about my church. My pastor preached this word Sunday. Amen. A prayer, a changed prayer that changes things. Hallelujah. And, 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 if, and if you believe on God, it can change your life right now. Let's pray right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got you to gotta change. Jesus changed. Amen. From Jewish to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. From, from, from law to grace. Amen. Prohibiting cry. You need a duck. So you need things to die and bleed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In order to receive redemption. Amen. To get atonement from your sins. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, no, you don't need any of those things. All you have to do is cry out to the Lord, our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, after you finish talking to God, amen, you got to do something that proves, amen, that you have the love of God in you. Amen. That you have the power of God in you. And the only thing that will prove that is your actions. Hallelujah. Your words ain't going to do it. Hallelujah. So that's why you got to forgive those. Amen. That have trespassed. Amen. That have sinned. Hallelujah. You have, those have sinned against you. Hallelujah. And those that, that are indebted to you, you got to forgive them. Because how God going to forgive you if you're not, you're not forgiving? He said, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you're meek, you're going to inherit the earth. Hallelujah. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Obtain mercy. Now we're asking God, we want everybody, <laughs> amen, to give us mercy. Amen. When we're wrong. Mercy means you're guilty. Mercy means you did it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, you're not innocent if you need mercy. Mercy is you got caught. Amen. Mercy is let me slide. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me get away with this. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we thank God for his mercy toward us. But we are relentless when it's somebody else. Hallelujah. We're ready to condemn like David. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Prophet came to him and said, man, what would you say about a man that had many sheep, man? Amen. Took that man that had one sheep. Hey, David said, that man should be, should be tore up. Amen. He should be killed. Amen. And, and, and Nathan said, you are the man. Hallelujah. Thou art the man. Amen. So we have, we don't want to, we relentless when somebody else is in sin, but when it's our turn, amen, we want God's mercy. Hallelujah. He prayed that prayer of mercy. Amen. And God delivered him. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, amen. That kingdom come, that will be done on earth that is in heaven. Amen. Give us this day. We want God to give us. Amen. Hallelujah. Every day, every moment that we live, it should be pleasing to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We need to forgive. Amen. We need to allow God to use us and to deliver us and to make ways out of no ways and to open doors to seem closed. Real briefly, let's go to Amen. Hallelujah. Second, the second book of Amen. Chronicles, the seventh chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Seven, the seventh chapter of Chronicles, the first uh, couple of chapters, you have Solomon taking over. Amen. The, the the house of Israel for, amen, as king, amen, over uh, David in succession of, of his father, King David. And so what you have, amen, is Solomon. David wanted to build a temple, amen. And so uh, God told David, you cannot build it, amen. You can't build my house because you got blood on your hands. Amen. That very story that I was telling you about, amen. You got blood on your hands. All the people he killed, amen, he couldn't build a temple because of one person he killed wrong, amen. Hallelujah. He, he, he did it uh, uh, out of the will of God. And God told him, you can't build my house. Amen. But one thing David did, did, did do, he provided for, amen, the house of God. And he set aside funds, amen, for Solomon to build the temple. He, I might not build it, amen, but I'm going to make sure that my son builds it. Amen. He made provision for his son. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And, 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 and Solomon, with, that, with his wisdom, 
that God gave him, took that money that David left, and not only built the temple and his house, hallelujah, but he also made Israel into a worldwide conglomerate. He made it into a, amen, he turned into an IBM, amen, hallelujah, uh, that, that people from other nations, Queen of Sheba, of all the people, amen, would come and see what he did, amen, hallelujah. They want to see what Solomon did because of his, amen, wisdom and knowledge, but it was David that made the provision, amen, and set aside the money for Solomon. Amen. And so Solomon built the temple. Amen. And in another scripture, we find out that the priests allowed the, amen, uh, not allowed, but they made a mistake. Amen. Allowed the fire. Amen. To go out in the old temple. Amen. And so Solomon's here. This temple is built. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he begins to pray to God in the seventh chapter. Amen. In the sixth chapter, he's praying to God concerning, amen, Israel and to bless this new house. He's asking God's uh, uh, anointing and appointment on this new house. Uh, it's one good thing to note that no matter what happened, the fire's out. Amen. They can't transfer the fire from the old temple to the new temple. But but Sam, uh, 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 Solomon keeps building. He keeps working. He don't stop. I don't have anything in here, but I'm going to keep on going anyway. Hallelujah. Because we, I have a job to do and I'm here to do the job. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what the circumstances are, it might not look right. But keep going like Nehemiah on the wall. It don't make sense. It did not make sense for him to go build that. Hallelujah. At that particular time, amen, just got tore up. Amen. Hallelujah. But he said, I'm going to go to bury my father. Amen. I'm going to take care of my family. Amen. And it's, King, go ahead. Go take care. Here's, here's, I need a letter because I want to. I want to make actually get there, you know, and so, amen, so he gave him a letter so he can make it there, amen, and he built, and, and, the, and he took doctors and people that didn't even know how to build anything, and he, they built up the, hallelujah, the walls, amen, around Jerusalem, because, amen, God can do the impossible with those that believe in the impossible, hallelujah, he can do great things through those that believe, amen, and now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled what? Oh, man. Somebody to give God some praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's give the Lord some praise. God filled the house and the priest. Amen. He filled the house to the extent that the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the the Lord's house. Hallelujah. And when we believe in God, when we trust, hallelujah, and believe in, I really could read the whole sixth chapter and the whole seventh chapter, to be honest with you. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to show some grace. Amen. Blessed are the merciful. Amen. <laughs> For they shall obtain. I, the, the mercy that I want to obtain is y'all actually reading those two chapters. Amen. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Because it's great how God moved in the situation. Amen. Sa uh, uh, Solomon is the leader. He's the new king. Hallelujah. And he's come out to David. Amen. And plus, amen, hallelujah, he, he, he's, he's, he's new, he's young, amen, and so we, we ought to trust and believe God, he got to do a new thing, amen, with, with, with the people of Israel, amen, with the house of Israel, hallelujah, and so he's standing before them in an in a, in a, in a altar, before an altar that's not lit, hallelujah, and I know some people probably standing and looking, amen, hallelujah, now who going to bring the fire, and what happened to the fire in the old temple, amen, the altar, but see, hallelujah, when you believe in God, you don't look for, amen, man to make a way, we look for, amen, everybody else, we call everybody else, we look for, can you help me, brother, can you spare a dime, hallelujah, but when we look to the Lord, if we look to God to make ways out of no way, hallelujah, then God will open up doors that seem closed, he will make ways out of no way, he will bless you, amen, God will deliver you in that right early. We need to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him. Hallelujah. And he shall direct our path. He said, he told Solomon, amen, when, it was, when he got by himself. He said, if the locusts shall devour the land, if the plagues shall come. He said, if my people, hallelujah, that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, hallelujah, then shall I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin, hallelujah, and I'll heal their land. The, the reason why the land's not healed today. Hallelujah. Because the people of God are not praying to God. Hallelujah. We're not looking to God. We're looking for the ministry to do everything. We're looking for the pastors to fix everything. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And then we use them up and, amen, drain the life out of them. Hallelujah. And then we vote in another pastor. And here we go. The, uh, the wheels on the bus go round and round. Hallelujah. And we, and we just keep going the same thing over. Same cycles. And who I'm going to siphon from this time. You out? Okay. Let me come over here.
here. Hey, let me pull out. You out? Let me cool. And, and, until everybody's gone. And, and, and we can't stand it. But we got to look to the Lord. Hallelujah. God is our Father. And Jesus is trying to let them know it's not Israel anymore. It's not the high priest anymore. It's not. That's why the veil was ripped. Hallelujah. Because you don't need man to get to God anymore. Hallelujah. You can get to God for yourself. Hallelujah. And so we need to cry unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strong tire. tire. The Lord is my savior. He's my keeper. You need to change prayer. You don't need to stop praying. You need to change your prayer. You're not saying it right. You're not speaking God's language. You need to speak where God can hear you. And you, you, you get a response from God. Because we do things for everybody else. We say, Lord, Ty, what's wrong with you? I'm going to pray for you right now. God, and so you, you take him. You take them to the place of, 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 of uh, arrogance, and you're over that person now. Like, I'm going to help you, you poor, insignificant child. Let me pray, amen, that God, no, baby. <laughs> We're all sinners saved by grace. Hallelujah. We're saved by grace. Hallelujah. So don't, don't forget who you was. Hallelujah. And once you come out of sin, no, you shouldn't be a sinner anymore. I understand that concept. Hallelujah. But, what, but you should understand, amen, hallelujah, that you wasn't born saved. You're not Jesus Christ. There was no star in the east. Hallelujah. There was no wise men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They didn't bring no gold and frankincense and myrrh to your, to your hospital room. Hallelujah. We seen your star in the east and we came to work. No, you're not Jesus, baby. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah, you need to know and understand that we are followers followers of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The only thing I would be envious of, it would be the disciples. Hallelujah. Because they was in the best university ever created in mankind. They was in the university of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. They were taught by God himself in the flesh. Hallelujah. Do you, do you understand? People try to get into Harvard and MIT and all these great uh, 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 institutions of learning today. Hallelujah. But Jesus Christ had his own class. Hallelujah. And with those disciples, amen, he turned this world right side up. Hallelujah. And so, saints, I come to let you know today, hallelujah, you got to change your prayer. You got to talk the way the Lord's telling you to talk. You got to let the Holy Ghost lead. Preach, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit lead you. The Holy Ghost know the language. Hallelujah. He knows how to speak to God. So you got to speak in the Holy Ghost. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost come, it'll lead and guide you to all truth. Hallelujah. And he'll speak those things. Hallelujah concerning God. Hallelujah. So when you when the Holy Ghost talk, it already knows the language. It's the translator. Hallelujah. Y'all see you at the UN, they having these meetings and amen. See the people with the little amen. Hallelujah. A little earphone. Amen on their ear. Amen. It's the translator in there giving them the language so they can understand what's being said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need God to translate us. Hallelujah. We need to be transformed. Hallelujah. By the renewing of our minds. Hallelujah. That we may speak what is that good and the perfect and acceptable will of God. That God may deliver us and set us free. That we may get an answer. Hallelujah. To what's going on in our life. We need an answer. I don't know about y'all. I don't, I got a goddaughter. She said, don't ask me the question if you don't want the answer. Hallelujah. Cause my rule number one with my kids is never lie to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I always want them to tell me the truth no matter what. And sometimes I would ask questions I didn't really want the answer to. And I've learned, especially with the, the fairer sex. Amen. When they say you don't want to know, amen. Walk away. Please leave that alone. Amen. Cause you don't want to know. Amen. And she will follow that up with, if you don't want to know the answer, don't ask the question. Hallelujah. And that's why I ask. I ask the question to get an answer. And when I talk to God, I'm looking for him to make a way out of nowhere and open doors how did that seem closed hallelujah 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 thank you jesus hallelujah thank you jesus and the, the woman said to the master that that son of the, the beggar amen said master that son of david have mercy on me hallelujah and they said shut up be quiet what's wrong with you that's jesus hallelujah why are you talking master that jesus that son of david have mercy the more they tell him to be quiet the, the more he yelled and screamed at jesus because he needed something that's why Jesus said, you come as a little child. Child don't care. Hallelujah. Don't care if you're watching TV. Don't care if you're on the phone. Don't care what you're doing. They want to, they want to go to the bathroom. They want that cookie. Amen. They want to eat whatever it is they want to do. Amen. Hallelujah. They're focused. Absolute focus. Hallelujah. You can say, well, we're going to do that tomorrow. Then can we go to the, wherever you say, whatever your answer is, they're going to direct it right back to what they wanted in the first place. 
And that's how we should approach the throne of, throne of grace. The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace so you attain help. Find mercy. Hallelujah. In the time of need. We need to find mercy. We need to find an answer for the world today. But you need to change. Hallelujah. Change prayer that changes things. Solomon's prayer changed things. He was upgraded. Amen. From son of the king. He was no longer prince. Hallelujah. But he was the king. So he had to do a changed prayer. How did he had to change his prayer? He had to do a leader's prayer. He had to step up to the plate. How to and talk to God. How to ask the king. How to before the people. And he prayed as a king. How, and the fire came down from heaven and filled. Hallelujah. And, and filled up the altar. Hallelujah. And the smoke filled the whole house of God. Hallelujah. God's house should be filled with the presence of God. Hallelujah. We should have God's presence in this place. Hallelujah. But nobody questioned. You didn't hear nothing about anybody questioning Solomon. Hallelujah. Saying, what you doing here? The fire's out. Ain't no we don't need to be over here. Ain't no fire over here. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing burning. Ain't nothing going on over here. Hallelujah. But they stayed right there with Solomon. Because they stayed there, they were blessed and they were delivered. How to stay still. How do you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? Allow God to use. It. Allow God to bless you. Hallelujah. Allow, um, most of the reason why we don't have things sometimes is because we move too much. We're shifting. And hey, we're turning the channels too much. Hallelujah. We change on too many different things. We're not stable. Hallelujah. The Bible says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Hallelujah. So we're, we're unstable. Hallelujah. We need to learn and understand hallelujah, that God has a purpose for our life. And I'm not moving until God bless me. Hallelujah. I'm going to be like Jacob. I'm going to hold on. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let go till you bless me. Go wherever you want to go. I'm going with you. Hallelujah. I'm not going nowhere till you bless me. Hallelujah. Elijah said the same thing to Elijah. I'm not going nowhere. I'm leaving here. Hallelujah. But you, you might be going somewhere, but I'm going with you. I'm not going to leave you. Hallelujah. He didn't, he didn't move. And God blessed him. Hallelujah. Every city that Elijah went to. Hallelujah. The, the other prophets. Amen. Said, you know, Elijah leaving. Hallelujah. You know, you know, he's about to die. He said, I'm a prophet like you. Stop. C calm down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm a prophet. I'm, I'm walking with him, man. Don't you think? I know. Amen. Hallelujah. Be quiet. Let, let God do what he's going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And every city went to three cities. Amen. They met Elijah. Elisha. Hallelujah. And said, Elijah, you know, Elijah's leaving. Hallelujah. He's about to die. Hallelujah. I know. He's a, he's a prophet of God. Hallelujah. I know he's about to leave. Everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. But when God caught Elijah up, hallelujah, and lifted him up, amen, and came and got him. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, Elijah, hallelujah, threw down his mantle. Hallelujah. Elijah caught the mantle. Hallelujah. hallelujah. He ripped off hey, his, his sackcloth and his ashes. Hallelujah. He ripped off his, 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 his disciple robe. Hallelujah. I'm no longer a follower anymore. Hallelujah. I'm no longer, amen, an apprentice. Amen. To Elijah. Hallelujah. I am hallelujah, the prophet now. Hallelujah. So he stepped, he ripped out of his Hallelujah. He put the mantle. Amen. He ripped the mantle and he hit the water just like Elijah did. And the water split and he walked over. Hallelujah. On the other side. And what I like is, when he got there, uh, the other the other prophet said, uh, the spirit of Elijah is on Elisha. Hallelujah. They have the same thing. They recognize. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what they're saying about you. Don't worry about what they're calling you. What? Don't worry about what they say is coming to pass. Your life is not in their hands. Your life is in God's hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That prayer will change things. But it got to be a changed prayer. You got to be your, your your kids call you a hundred different times. Uh, Ma, I need this. Daddy, I need this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a cry from a child. There's a cry of distress. Hallelujah. There's a cry of pain. Uh, stubbed the toe or fell off the bike or something. You, you there's a certain pitch. Amen. That when a parent hears it, they 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 don't ask. They don't. <laughs> they, they don't. What happened? Oh, they send one other children. Y'all go out there and see. No, none of that. How did, when they hear that note, they gone. They going to see about their child. Hallelujah. 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 And we need to hit that note with God. That's a changed prayer. Hallelujah.